What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. If you're like most Americans, living on the shore of a lake, river, or an ocean, sea, whatever, gulf, is a dream. Something about living near water attracts most of us. The downside is, we all can't. There are problems with living near water. Most places are far too expensive, and other places like, let's say, Gary, Indiana, are so run down, free is too expensive. Today's list is about lake towns that you don't have to be rich to live in. What makes a great lake town? Well, I guess for starters, it has to have a lake. After that, you start looking at cost of living and home prices. There are some really nice lake towns in this country that are so expensive, it sort of makes them not so nice. Today's video is about lake towns that most of us can afford. I should say all of us can afford because nobody with $5 million in the bank watches YouTube. They're just too busy counting money or staring at their bank account online like an adoring father looks at a newborn. This list is about the best affordable lake towns that we found in the United States. There might be some that you feel are a better choice and we'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. All right, let's see what we found. Number 10, Bull Shoals, Arkansas. If you're looking for a place to discover your inner peace, maybe get some balance, Bull Shoals, Arkansas may be the place you're looking for. Now I know what you're thinking. How can they achieve inner peace in Arkansas? They have NASCAR and moonshine. Well, I'm here to tell you it is possible because those are stereotypes. Not everyone in Arkansas likes NASCAR and moonshine. That would be Alabama. Arkansas is actually one of the most beautiful natural states we have. Yes, they do have Pine Bluff and Little Rock, but 90% of this state is amazing. This little town on Bull Shoals Lake in the Ozarks near the Missouri border offers more than enough peace and harmony at a low price. They say the average home is listed for around $175,000, but you can get a plot of land a short walk from the Bull Shoals Lake for as low as $30,000 and build whatever you want on it. Or you can get a smaller, older home on the water for less than $300,000. That's lakefront property for less than 300000 This whole area is that way, all the way out to Mountain Home, Arkansas. It's sort of, you know, the same, just give or take a couple thousand. Number nine, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Beaver Dam is in Wisconsin, and it's not in a bad part of Milwaukee, so right off the bat, you know it's a great place for families. If you look around this town, you start to see what the Leave It to Beaver Town would have looked like if it was real. This is a cute town with well-maintained yards. Side note to that, a quick way to tell how nice a town or city is, Look at the lawns. If more than one or two on a block aren't being kept up, they have some poverty issues. Anyway, in Beaver Dam, you can get half acre lots of land for thirty-five to fifty-five thousand, and most of the homes are under two hundred thousand. The on the water type homes, you know, with the lake in your backyard, they only run around three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand. Winters can get rough, so buy a good jacket. Number eight, Wadawi, Alabama. About an hour and a half from Atlanta, you have the small town of Wadawi, and it has a bunch of land that's priced to move. Yes, I said priced to move like a sleazy car salesman. When I say Wadawi, I mean the area around it. There's only a small river that actually flows through town. Actually, it's just outside of town. But not too far away, you have Lake Wadawi or R.L. Harris Reservoir, which I believe is its actual name. I've seen it called both. Anyway, the land around this part of Alabama is breathtaking, so any place you buy property here is going to look good. Thick woods with creeks, rivers, and lakes are everywhere around here. They have all the price ranges from 100000 to 900000 for a house on or near the water. But you can also get acres of land with nothing on it for as low as 14000 But most of the plots of land go for around forty to 60000 and that's right on the water. The cost of living here is also very low for Lake Town. This place is beautiful. I've been to this part of Alabama before. Never been to this actual town, but I've been in this part of Alabama before, and it is nice. Definitely like it here. I was there during the summer and it gets a little hot and a little humid, but it's still nice. Number seven, Richville, Minnesota. Between Fargo, North Dakota and St. Cloud, Minnesota, you have Richville, Minnesota. The area contains at least a dozen lakes, including the 35 square mile Dead Lake. I don't know if I like the sound of that. Dead Lake. Do you go fishing for like zombie trout there or undead bass? If the locals aren't working, you could find them on one of the many lakes in the area doing some fishing, or they might be found in the town's only restaurant, the Rockin' Horse Cafe, which on their website, their slogan is the best home cooking this side of town. The town's the size of a mini mall. Come on. <laughs> 
The cost of living in this area is very low and they have next to no crime. A crime in Richville is lying about the size of a muskie you caught. You can get an on the water home for as low as $200,000 and lots of land for around $40,000. The nicer waterfront homes run about four to five hundred thousand range on Dead Lake, while other parts of Dead Lake are a bit more affordable. The nicer areas you're looking four to five hundred thousand. You could actually get a cabin with some of the best fishing in the area for as low as $230,000 on an acre of land that's on the water. Number six, Spirit Lake, Iowa. If you like nice, safe towns that are surrounded by water with a low cost of living, give you a haul a call and start packing. Spirit Lake, Iowa is that place. Now, a lot of the homes here can get a little pricey for this list, but they've made quarter acre lots that you can buy for under $20,000, and that's according to Zillow. Older, decent homes that are within walking distance to one of the lakes are under $200,000, and there's condos that go for around $80,000. Yes, some of the really nice homes on the water with private docks, that whole thing can get up over 500000 And if you could afford it, it's well worth it. Even though Spirit Lake is a good distance from any real city, it has everything you need, including a Walmart and a golf course. Everyone needs a Walmart, especially if you live in Iowa. That's where you meet all your friends, I guess. Anyway, this is a tourist town, so expect the summers to get a little busy if you move to Spirit Lake. Number five, Branson, Missouri. If you haven't heard of Branson, Missouri, it's just like Vegas without all the gambling, young people, fun, and teeth. But they do have more people in walkers and in possession of an AARP card. Branson does have some fun things to do, don't get me wrong. They also have really cheap real estate and a very low cost of living. The average home in Branson costs around $200,000, and that's not bad for a city like Branson. You can also find quarter acre lots for less than $50,000 that sit a short walk from Table Rock Lake. Branson's a nice, quiet place for a tourist town. It's really weird that's how this place is. They're able to maintain this like small town feel for a tourist town. Branson, Missouri isn't that big, but they see 7.2 million visitors a year. That's a lot of people coming through this town every single year. Obviously not in 2020, but most other years, they see about 7.2 million people. Number four, Albany, Georgia. Albany, Georgia probably isn't the best place to live. It's actually really one of the worst places to live, kinda. The crime rate is 114% higher than the Georgia average and almost 200% higher than the national average. Here's the good news. The cost of living in Albany is 14% lower than the national average and the real estate prices are 59% lower. So that's good for you if you're looking for a cheap place to live on the water. So you're thinking right now, why would I call a Realtor? It sounds like it sucks. Well, it does, but not so much on the north side where Lake Cheeha is. You can get a lot of land on the water on Lake Cheeha for under $75,000. That's nothing there. It's just a lot. Build what you need to. Or you can get a nice older home in the $200,000 range that's either on the water or really close to the water. Albany, Georgia, outside of town, isn't that bad. What you definitely don't want to do is look at commercial real estate here. They got a lot of boarded up shops, and I get the feeling there's a reason for that. Number three, Warsaw, Missouri. Warsaw, Missouri sits near the Harry S. Truman Reservoir, and there is a lot of land in this area to choose from for under $100,000 that is on or very near the reservoir. The real estate in Warsaw is 49% lower than the national average, and there are homes actually in town that are livable but may need a little work for under $150,000. They're not run down. They're not falling apart. They're nice homes. They just might need to be cleaned up a little bit. You can get a half acre to three quarter acre lot around the reservoir for about $50,000. And that gives you a short walk to the water. For seventy five dollars to $100,000, you are right on the water. That's a vacant lot. They do have some really nice homes around this area for about $300,000. You should check it out on Zillow. I'm sort of digging this place. They have some crime, but it's not nearly as bad as a place like Albany. It's nothing like something like Detroit or anything weird like this. It's about 50% higher than the national average right now. It was a lot worse. I was looking at the crime stats and it's been dropping year over year for the last five years. Five years ago, it was like 75% higher than the national average. So they're doing good in that department. Warsaw, Missouri. There's another place coming up next that's really close to this that's worth looking at if you want a lake house. Or in this case, a reservoir house. 
Number two, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. East of Warsaw, Missouri, down the Osage River is Lake of the Ozarks and Osage Beach. These two places, Warsaw and Osage Beach, are connected by the river, but they're different. So all along the Osage River and Lake of the Ozarks is lakefront property just waiting for someone to slap around $50,000 down for an acre or two and do something with it. These lots in most cases are out of the way of any cities or towns or people for that matter and would probably be a great place for a tiny home until you build your log cabin or whatever you have in mind. This whole area has a very low cost of living and really good fishing. If you're looking for something already built close to let's say Osage Beach, the starting price is around 250 and it goes up. It goes way up from there. What I like about this place, I mean besides being so close to Big Dick's halfway in, is the amount of lakefront property. It's amazing. All these little bays and inlets. It's you get lost in this thing. It's it's an amazing place. And number one, Jamestown, New York. Jamestown is in upstate New York, about an hour and a half southwest of Buffalo near Lake Erie. This is a great place for people who like lakes. They have a lot of them in this area. This is also the hometown of the National Comedy Center. It's an interactive humor museum that throws an annual Lucille Ball Comedy Festival every August. Probably not this August because of COVID-19. Jamestown sits on Lake Chautauqua, and besides having a bunch of smaller lakes in the area, like I said, it's not too far from Lake Erie. It's not unusual to see a two-bedroom, two-bath house in this town that is kind of boring on the outside, but it comes with a private shoreline and a boat dock for about $290,000. Yeah, your own dock, shoreline. You get off the shore a little bit and you can find an older, nice home for around 100000 A quarter to a half acre lots can go for as low as $10,000 in this area. But the decent ones are in the neighborhood of 50000 That's a vacant lot. You could build whatever you want on it. Tiny home, live in a van, who knows. Whatever you want to do. Jamestown, New York, if you can get past the cold... Because it gets cold upstate, this is a great place to live. Sure, they got some crime and other things like that, but it's not terrible. And it's really cheap. Their cost of living is dirt cheap. Actually, Area Vibes gives them an A plus in cost of living. All right, so that's today's list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. You know, this one, we just grabbed some that we thought were interesting. There are thousands and thousands of lakes in this country that probably have cheaper land. You know, some of them do, I'm sure. I'd love to hear about them in the comment section. Maybe we'll make another video about this in the future. But this is a video people have been asking for. They want to, you know, where's the best place to get a lake house? Where's the best beaches to buy homes at? You know, things like that. And we're going to work our way through some of those suggestions. But this is the first one. Anyway, don't forget to hit the like button on this. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. Leave us a comment. Don't forget all the links below. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.